This is the MAT 140 lecture number 14 on the simplex method. The simplex method is an algorithm discovered by George Danzig in the 1940s for solving linear programming problems, particularly when those problems involve many variables uh, and, and equations. Note that even with three variables it becomes difficult to follow a graphical approach because the graph would be three-dimensional and that's difficult to, unless you have a computer to, to, to construct. And so just try imagining what would happen with four or more variables and you would see why the simplex method is important to solve more realistic linear programming problems. The ones that we did, the one that we did last, uh, on the last uh, assignment, so there's only two variables and it wasn't very realistic. To make them more realistic, we need more variables and more equations. And then it becomes just impossible uh, to do graphically. We need another method. We could still do by hand, although nowadays, of course, a uh, computer is perfect for this sort of thing. So it could speed up what would be uh, tedious calculations. So I will get to that, but I got to tell the story about George Danzig. It's really a fantastic story. So if you look him up on Google, you go to the Wikipedia page, see George Bernard Danzig from 1914 to 2005 was an American mathematical scientist who made important contributions to industrial engineering, operations research, computer science, economics, and statistics. He's known for the development of the simplex algorithm. Continuing here we see in statistics Danzig solved two open problems in statistical theory which he had mistaken for homework after arriving late to a lecture by Jersey Neyman. So it's such a great story. There's a little bit more about it if you scroll down here. Mathematical statistics is the entry. It says an event in Danzig's life became the origin of a famous story in 1939 when he was a graduate student at UC Berkeley. Near the beginning of a class for which Danzig was late, Professor Jerzy Neyman wrote two examples of famously unsolved statistics problems on the blackboard. And when Danzig arrived, he assumed that two problems were just homework, were a homework assignment, and he wrote them down. And according to Danzig, the problem seemed a little harder than usual, but a few days later, he had handed in completed solutions for the two problems, still thinking still believing that the assignment was uh, it was overdue. So it was six weeks later that Danzig received a visit from his excited professor, Neyman, who was eager to tell him that the homework problems he had solved were two of the most famous unsolved problems in statistics. And he had prepared one of Danzig's solutions for publications for publication in a mathematical journal. As Danzig told it in a 1986 interview, for the College Math Journal. A year later, I began to worry about a thesis topic. Neyman just shrugged and told me to wrap the two problems in a binder and he would accept that as the thesis. This story may have been the inspiration, was probably the inspiration, for the opening scene in the movie Goodwill Hunting, where a young student solves very difficult, unsolved problems that the professor had proposed to the class and posted in the hallway, the character that Matt Damon plays is not even in the class, but sees those problems and solves them. So let's go back and look at an example of this simplex method. Let's start with the example that we solved in the previous uh, lesson. A manufacturer of refrigerators must ship at least 100 refrigerators to its two West Coast warehouses. Each warehouse holds a maximum of 100 refrigerators. Warehouse A holds 25 refrigerators already, and Warehouse B already has 20 on hand. It costs $12 to ship a refrigerator to A and 10 to ship to B. Union rules require at least 300 workers are employed. Shipping to warehouse A will require four workers for each refrigerator, while shipping to B requires two workers for each refrigerator. How many refrigerators should be shipped to each warehouse to minimize costs, and what is the minimum cost? So I know it was kind of a ridiculous example, but 
um, it was set up with those numbers so that we could actually solve it by hand uh, and it really did sound like a logistics problem even if it wasn't all that realistic. Here is the setup that we did in the previous lesson. X was the number of fridges that will ship to warehouse A, Y will be the number that gets shipped to warehouse B. We began with the constraints that X and Y can't be negative, they got to be zero or bigger. Because it said that we must ship at least 100 refrigerators, we know that X plus Y is greater than or equal to 100. But since warehouse, oh, and it, it says each warehouse can hold a maximum of 100 refrigerators, so that is a constraint, and further warehouse A already has 25, so warehouse A could, we could only send 75 because it could only hold 100. It says that warehouse B already has 20 refrigerators on hand, so if it can only hold 100 maximum, then the number we send to warehouse B has to be less than or equal to 80, and then there's that constraint that we had to hire at least 300 workers, which since it's going to take four workers for each refrigerator going to A and two for each refrigerator going to B, this is the total number of workers that are employed and that had to be greater than or equal to 300. We also had the objective function that the cost was $12 for each refrigerator that goes to A and $10 for each refrigerator going to B and that was the objective function. So we can take the constraints the objective function, we can go to a simplex calculator which will uh, solve this problem for us uh, and, and uh, that, that's what I want to demonstrate how to do. I mean what's really satisfying here, what I'm trying to accomplish is to see a different method giving us the same answer. Uh, that's a beautiful thing to see as what happens in mathematics. So this is the website where I have a simplex method tool built into the website. I'll put the link this is the page that I'm on and I'll put the link for this page uh, in, the, in the course notes and in the comments for the, for the video. So in this space we can type in the linear programming constraints and the objective function that we want to uh, we want the computer to solve for us and just to sort of get started, what should, it, what should you type in? You can hit this button here to look at some examples. So it's very easy, very natural the way you type it in. Notice that, for example, if I want to do less than or equal, I just type a less than equal together like this. So these are some examples. So what should we type in? Let's look back at the question. So here are the constraints. This is what I'm trying to uh, optimize and what I want is a minimum value so let's type that in. Okay so I've got everything typed in here let's see what happens. Yeah that's it 1100 50 and 50 that's exactly what we got working that out by hand in the previous lesson. Remember going through this process with those constraints I graphed two variables, set up an x and y axis, and went through the process of graphing the region that satisfied all those constraints. Once I had that, I needed all the corner points, and I went through and tested, because it's a principle of linear programming, uh, that the optimal value will always occur at one of the corners of the region of feasible solutions. And there it was, $1,100 was the minimum cost that happens exactly when you send 50 refrigerators to each warehouse. And that's what, exactly what I'm getting from the simplex method. What the simplex method does is creates this matrix involving the variables that we had defined and because we're working with inequalities, it creates these other variables to sort of make up the difference, whether you need to be less or greater than a certain value. It goes through a series of transformations of that matrix to work out what the minimum or maximum value is, whatever it is you're trying to determine. Now, of course, the purpose of this is to handle questions 
that have three or four or many more variables. So, But actually, also, a really nice use for this would be to just check the solutions that we get when we learn the graphical method. By learning the graphical method, you're getting a good uh, introduction to the concepts of linear programming and, and how it really works. And you'd really have to know the, linear, the uh, graphical method before you moved on to learn the methods that handle three variables or four variables. So maybe a good thing to do with this would be to just uh, use it to check, make sure you got the right answer uh, with a two variable example. So let's go to our course notes and let's go to these linear programming notes. Let's skip to the second example. A factory manufactures a factory manufactures two types of gadgets, regular and premium, and each gadget requires two operations, assembly and finishing, and there are at most 12 hours available for each operation. A regular gadget requires an hour of assembly and two hours of finishing, while a premium gadget requires two hours of assembly and one hour of finishing. And due to other restrictions, the company can make at most seven gadgets a day. If, a prof if the profit is 20 for each regular gadget and 30 for each premium gadget, how many of each should the manufacturer should be manufactured to man to maximize the profit. So X is the number of regular gadgets, Y is the number of premium gadgets. We won't make negative numbers of these gadgets and there's a constraint in there that the company can make at most seven gadgets in a day. So there's the uh, constraint as an inequality. Well, we're given that there are at most 12 hours available for each of these operations, assembly and finishing. And so if you look at each regular gadget taking one hour of assembly and each premium gadget taking two hours of assembly, this is the total number of hours for the assembly uh, that are needed for a level of production given by the values x and y. And that had to be less than or equal to 12. And the same thing for finishing, we had the same restriction on the number of hours, but it was the regular gadgets that took two hours of finishing and premium gadgets took just one hour of finishing. And the constraint on finishing was also 12 hours, so those two constraints come in and we know that profit of $20 is realized for each regular gadget and there's a $30 profit for each of the premium gadgets and so this is the objective function that represents the profit and so of course I want to maximize that. So let's put this into our simplex calculator and see what it comes up with. Okay, so this tells me maximum profit uh, is $190 if you make two of the regular gadgets and five of the premium gadgets. Sure enough, going through that work, I get the same result in the graphical method, so both these two different methods are giving me the same answer. Alright, so this was the example that I had worked out in this other video that I had posted before. It's this link here. And so we're check we've checked it with the simplex method, so I think I'll stop there. I hope this video has been helpful.